And we're here. This is Ted Hicks, Late Night Parents, on a new night, new day, new night. Ways to get in contact with the show, twitter.com, Real Ted Hicks, or Late Night Parent. You can find us on facebook.com forward slash Late Night Parents, and our website is latenightparents.com. It's been about two weeks since I've been on the air live. And I'd like to say nothing has happened in those two weeks, but I'd be a liar. But before we get into any of that, some people um, that we have to thank, some some organizations that we have to thank for making the show, which was bi-weekly on Saturdays at 4.30 p.m., weekly on Sunday nights, 7 p.m. I want to thank our good friends at Verizon Fios for supporting the show, for uh, sponsoring the show. Really appreciate everything that you guys do from the wireless Verizon wireless side to the Verizon Fios side. Thank you guys again. As you know, if you're new, a new listener, and you don't know about this show, and you're like, wait, I'm used to you know, some type of soca music or, or Caribbean music being on. And you're like, where's the music? It's not here right now. As I mentioned before, this is Late Night Parents. This is Ted Hicks. We do a lot of things on this show. I, I, you know, I kind of wanted to take a few seconds or a few minutes to ramble, to rant, as I do every week. Um... We talk about all different types of topics, uh, but we do this with the best media partners in the world. So I want to give a a couple of shout outs to our friends. And as we do, we'll do at the start of every show, our good friends in the UK XRP radio that airs the show. You and I are one radio, Mr. Scott Price, Eric at Life Improvement Radio in Sarasota. Arena Sports Network, Mr. Brian Snow, who will be on the show uh, in less than 30 minutes. Mile High Radio in Denver. I want to thank you guys for, as I've said, airing the show. This is the podcast that grew up to hopefully become a radio show. It's usually the other way around. Radio shows become podcasts. But... As I mentioned before, <clears throat> this is Late Night Parents. We talk, we talk with parents about the latest trends, and we talk with game changers, of course, in technology, education, sports. We do some product reviews on the show. Primarily, it's revolving around uh the parents that do come on the show that I do speak with, whether live or recorded. Yeah, that's what the show is basically about. So if you're expecting a sports show, I think you got to wait 60 minutes for Sports Talk New York. That's a great show that um, that follows this show. Two hour extravaganza on New York sports. We will get into sports a little bit. I'll say 20 minutes, I mean, excuse me, 20% of the show, of our weekly show and podcast are dedicated towards sports. Most of the time it isn't. So it's not a sports show, as I mentioned before. So where do we go? Where do we go from here? We're we're, we're at this point right now um, when you look and you say, okay, I'm doing something new, and I'm unsure about it, and what do you do when you don't know what to do? You push forward, and that's what we're doing here. We're going to push forward. We're going to push forward each and every week, bringing you those specific topics that you may want to hear about, that you may not want to hear about, but we're going to present them, and we're going to have that conversation, you know, we, we've sat the entire week, the past couple of weeks, and people are talking about emails and people are talking about this person's a bigot, that person's that. You know, we're talking about this one is, is kneeling for the flag. 
if you're looking for that type of commentary, you're not really going to find it here. We try to keep it positive, productive. Every now and then we go into, you know, we kind of a uh, downward spiral. Yeah, we go into a downward spiral. And we, we are forced to talk about this type of stuff. So with that, I'm going to say the show's over. No, I'm just joking. Far from over. As, as I've said before, excited to be here. Excited. Um, on Wednesdays, we do this with our other radio partner. On Sunday nights, 1240 AM WGBB is our partner. Wednesday night, blog talk radio forward slash happy hour network. My other home where we do the Wednesday podcast. So Wednesday nights, we do long form discussions. Sunday nights, abridged, the abridged version. Yeah, that's just how it is. So on this upcoming Wednesday night, we are going to be talking with um, our third guest this evening, Bucko Bruce. And we're going to continue the series, Bucko Bruce Knows Football, where we're going to lay down the, the happenings. Because we got to talk about the NFL. Because everyone is just, you know, so jacked up about it. I will tell you, I did not watch a single snap of preseason football. I'm a Jets fan. But I, I'm going to say I'm more of a fan. So I'll go to games all over the place. And I've gone to games in Dallas. I've gone to games San Francisco. I'm going to a game in next month um, to Baltimore. Ravens. I mean, Raiders at Ravens. Because I'm more of a fan. Yes, I am a homer. Yes, I love the Mets. Yes, I love my local teams. But I'm primarily a fan. So we're going to real quickly go into our promos. And then our first guest will be up for our Ask Dr. Michelle segment at 30 minutes past the hour, Mr. Brian Snow, and then Buckle Bruce at 45 minutes past. I am loving my Verizon FIOS. In fact, I recently joked that if we move, we have to find a place with FIOS coverage. To my surprise, our family actually agreed. Not only is FIOS the fastest internet service, it also has never been down, with the exception of when Storm Sandy hit us. And indeed, only FIOS gives you the same speed uploading for your files, photos, etc., as it does downloading, as in HD movies. Cable cannot offer you this, only FIOS. So go ahead, make a very smart choice with Verizon FIOS. If you like your radio a bit on the fantastic side, try listening to the Happy Hour Network on Blog Talk Radio. The Happy Hour Network features live shows such as Late Night Parents with Ted Hicks, Baseball, Beer, and Barbecue with Ted, Todd Vandenberg, and Lee Vowell, The Seahawks Show with Kevin Daggett, and NBA Full Court Press with Danny Thompson. You can also catch podcasts like The Fwat Show, The Earnestly Speaking Podcast, Cinema Savants, and The Tennis Scene, found at blogtalkradio.com slash happy hour network. The Happy Hour Network, radio worth listening to. Are you looking for some sick sports apparel? DHTK designed some of the newest and coolest brands such as Represent, Game Over, and Don't Hate the King. DHTK's vision is to integrate culture, fashion, and attitude that best represents the players and caters to us, the fans. Click on DHTK.com and subscribe to their mailing list for an automatic 10% off your order. If you are a basketball fan, follow DHTK on social media. Visit DHTK.com for more details. DHTK.com. You don't have to be a king to dress like one. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook of your choice and a free 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash late night parents and choose from over 180,000 audio programs. Download a title free and start listening. It's that easy. Go to audibletrial.com slash late night parents. 
That's audibletrial.com slash late night parents and get started today. Why Audible? Audible content includes more than 180,000 audio programs from the leading audiobook publishers, broadcasters, entertainers, magazine and newspaper publishers, and business information providers. That's audibletrials.com slash late night parents. And we're back. Promos are done. We paid the bills. Or we've at least tried to pay homage to some of the people that uh, support the show. So we want to thank, the, once again, thank our sponsors, Verizon Fios, Verizon Wireless, and of course, the other promos you have to sit through, audibletrials.com. The Happy Hour Network. And our good friends, Don't Hate the King, want to thank them, as always, for supporting the show. So, usually when we would have a Saturday show, five minutes past the hour, we would have our good friend, Dr. Michelle, with her segment, Ask Dr. Michelle. So, it's something new. We're a little slow, a little late. So, we're going to hope for 10 minutes past the hour on the Sat- Sunday show for Ask Dr. Michelle, our segment. Dr. Michelle, how are you doing? I am fine. How are you doing, Ted? Pretty good, pretty good. It's it's Sunday. Um, there's no tropical storms outside. Um, I'm knocking on wood here. Um, <laughs> I, I, I am happy. <laughs> and I want to let you know, great. I want to let you know, God is definitely good, and I edged the grass Yesterday morning, Doctor Michelle. <laughs> so you were getting a jump on things. So yes, that's even better. So you didn't have to do so much work right day on Sunday, so you could truly rest and relax. I, and that is exactly what I did. I got to tell you, Doctor Michelle, I went to early service, came home, um, sat around with the family a little bit, and then took a nap. I took a nap. I just said, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. I know you guys aren't happy with it. I know you want me to drive you here. Because you know with the kids. They want you to drive you here, there, where, everywhere. And I said, I'm taking a nap, folks. But that's good. I mean, that was a sign, too, that your body needed its rest. So there's nothing wrong with taking a nap at all. That is true. There's been a couple things that came up over the past couple of weeks, Dr. Michelle, since the last time you and I uh, talked, this thing about EpiPens being five, $600 and CEOs making <laughs> two, they were making $2 million a year. Now they're making 18 or $20 million a year. Dr. Michelle, what in the world? I mean, I had no idea. Like I've seen the EpiPens and you know, the, like your local Walgreens or, or something like that, like locked away. Mm-hmm. But what in the world? Tell us about that. Tell us your thoughts on that. <laughs> well, basically, the price for the EpiPens went up to over $600. And as a result of that, that caused the insurance companies to increase the copays for the EpiPen. And mind you, um, one of my sons does have allergies and needs an EpiPen, and his doctor had filled the prescription probably over a month ago. And by the time I actually went to go get the prescription, Uh it was right after work the other Saturday, the lady's like, your copay is $130. (laughs) I'm not not laughing at you. I'm just like, I can only imagine the look on your face. I said, what did you just say? And she said, $130. She said, if you had come like a little while earlier, you know, a couple of weeks before when it was called in, you would have been able to get it for like $5. So I said, okay, what can we do? And she said, go online to the manufacturer's website and you could print out a voucher. And with the voucher, the copay was $0. But the other thing is, if you're in a case where you don't have insurance or right. your insurance, still the copay is a lot. 
you could always ask your doctor to write a prescription for the epinephrine, a smaller vial. Okay. And you get the syringe, and you just pre-fill the syringe, or your doctor can pre-fill the syringe, and you can do that for, like, less than $15. But at the same time, you're walking around now with a skinny syringe, and it's not labeled as epinephrine right. as it's opposed to the EpiPen, and then you run the risk of somebody thinking it's something else. So right. that's another thing to think about. But, um, yes. It's an unfortunate situation the way pharmaceutical companies are going in as far as making a profit, but it's not trickling down to the doctors and to the patients as far as helping to make sure we're still able to get adequate access to the medicine that we need. And it happens all the time where in the office we want to prescribe X, but the insurance company wants you to prescribe A before right. X, and even though the patient might have been on A before and A didn't work and you know X works and then they have to go through a whole prior authorization and you have to talk to a doctor on the other line to make sure that they agree with what you agree so the patient can Ugh. actually get X. So, so, so the patient that's in need is just, once again, I mean, we hate to use the word victim, but this is the person that's out there. It's, it's, Here's another term I, I want to use, and, and, and you might get upset with me, but when these, uh, you know, these companies, these pharmaceutical companies are the only game in town, are we used to seeing this type of behavior with, you know, the cost increase like this? I mean, is, is something like this the norm or, you know, because... Well, basically, they can do whatever they want wow. to do when they want to do it. Um, yes, there's supposed to be a generic that's going to be coming out, and I think that'll be um, under $300. But at the same time, when your choices are very limited, you know, you know the whole thing back in economics, supply and demand. That's true. This is a classic case of it. Ugh. And it's unfortunate. And people don't understand, especially as a doctor, we're on the phone a lot trying to get the appropriate medicine for our patients and sometimes people don't realize what it takes in addition to seeing patients that now you have to have someone get on the phone to get to the right person so that you can get on the phone to speak to the right person oh. who hopefully will see your point about whatever medication your patient needs oh my my oh my hey i i think yes. i think you and i were were, were talking I think it was last week or it might have been the week before. And I asked you about Hilal. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Hilal? Oh, the Hilo app. The Hilo app. One, yes. of, one of my friends um, who lives out of town uh, mentioned to me uh, about the Hilo app. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he mentioned, <laughs> you know, and, and it, it's kind of what we all go through, you know, as, as patients – well, I like to say myself as a, as a patient, let's say, you know, annually I get, so I get my blood work done and you're kind of sitting there wondering, okay, well, how did, you know, what were the results? And you're calling the doctor's office and everything else like that. My, my buddy mentioned to me with that app, he's able to log in, see his results, see all the, you know, all of his visits all the prescriptions that he's he's currently on and I said oh my and I, I mentioned it to you and you were just like oh yeah we've been using this for the last eight nine years yes we're, we're gonna have to have a conversation offline because I don't know where who you go to oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> but with the electronic records the point is that the doctors have access to you and you have access to your records. Ah, okay. So, yes, you can go online if you decide. I'll just, I'll just say, for example, I'm your doctor. Right. You decide that you are away on vacation and you realize that you forgot your blood pressure medicine. Okay. So what you can actually do is, as long as you're in the office during the day, you can just quickly just send me an email. Dr. Reed, I am so sorry. I went to Hawaii without you and your family, and I <laughs> left my medication. Can you please call it in to 
or e-prescribe it because we can send electronically right. to this pharmacy in Hawaii, and we can just do it like that. Or if you're really anxious and you want to know what your lab results are from what we did 24, 48 hours ago, you can go online, look up your labs, review your labs. If you realize that you forgot to tell us a medication that the cardiologist started you on, by mistake, uh, you neglected it when you came in for your last visit, you could even send an email to update your records as far as that. So with the Hilo app, it's an app that you have on your phone where you can access your records. But most patients, or sorry, most electronic records, you can go to the individualized patient portal without having to do the Hilo app. So some people like the Hilo app to look at their records for whatever electronic health records their doctor uses, or others like to just go directly to the electronic health records patient portal to look up results. So it's, it's a matter of, like, what's your personal preference is. Gotcha. Hey, Dr. Michelle, when I, when I ask you this question, so for some of your patients that are older um that have access to this app, is it easy to Ooh. use? Wait, 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 wait. See, I think you're making a major um, assumption that as you get older, you use less <laughs> technology, and I don't necessarily <laughs> believe that that's the case. <laughs> Not at all. Some people who are, good, who are listening to this show, and they're probably going to get a little offended because Not in their all. 70s and 80s, people are still using the Internet. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> they were on the internet when it was when it was dial up, you know. I That's mean, right. But no, my That's question, right. my question, because I'm thinking about my dad. <laughs> so my dad is in his mid 80s, and mm-hmm. when he, I, 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 I'm not even sure if I shared it with you when I when he sends me a text message, everything is in all caps, and I'm like, Dad, is everything okay? You know, lay off that cap button a little bit. But no, my question is, is it is the technology easy to use? regardless of the age. Oh, it is. It is very easy. And what we normally would do in the practice initially was print out labs, and we found out that the majority of the patients have already gone on to the patient portal, so when they come back to review the labs, we don't necessarily have to give them a copy of their labs. Gotcha. But some people still want to have a piece of paper, so we'll still go ahead and give them their results so that way they have them so if they go see the endocrinologist or whatever specialist they have to the the, their labs already written out for them or printed out so they can just hand it in to the specialist gotcha (laughs) dr michelle what's going on in your world this week well we are starting our big push and when i say we it's dr michelle and next generation athletics in westbury We're starting our push to celebrate Child Obesity Month, which is now September. All right. So on September 24th, it's a Saturday, we are going to have a Walk to Health with Fit Doc, myself, and some surprise guests. We're going to be starting at 830 from Eisenhower Park, that's Field Five, and you can park in Field four or five, but we're going to start at seal five, and we are going to have a healthy, family-friendly walk um, because we're realizing that child obesity has become a very serious problem, and it's something that we have to start to work on from the time a child is born because we're seeing children that are four, five, six years old that are not at healthy weight. And if they're not at a healthy weight at 4, 5, 6, 7, by the time they get 15, 16, they've extremely gained a significant amount of weight, which is putting them at an increased risk for high blood pressure and prediabetes and high cholesterol. So what we wanted to do was dedicate a day where we're going to have the entire family come out and exercise together. And this will be something that hopefully as the school year continues 
that the families will continue to exercise together, be it at home, be it at Next Generation, which is at 575 Merrick Avenue in Westbury, because we're going to continue with the basketball training. Um, They're going to have soccer, baseball, I think pitching, coaching. Um, I think there's going to be a girls' softball league there. Uh, and, of course, more importantly, I guess most importantly, is the adult exercise classes. So we're going to have yoga, boot camp, Zumba, core strengthening class, because you're there with your child, so it's important that your child sees you exercising, too. And um, that's something that I'm really excited about. We have the flyers ready, so now we're getting ready to start our push for Saturday, September 24th at 8.30 a.m. so we can register and the walk will start at 9 o'clock. Field 5 Eisenhower Park. That is excellent. Hey, Dr. Michelle, we know... I I look forward to you bringing your whole family. I will definitely bring the whole family. I'm really Mm -hmm. excited about that. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm looking forward to making sure you have the whole family there. (laughs) (laughs) And make sure everybody has their speakers on because I don't want anyone to say that uh, they didn't have their speakers or they forgot their speakers. You know, (laughs) so when I show up there with a pair of flip-flops and I'm taking pictures and doing a photo op with you guys and like, all right, I'll see you guys. No, that's not part of the plan. (laughs) That was not part of the plan. Oh, my goodness. You got to come correct or don't come at all. Dr. Mm-hmm. Michelle, as always, it's wonderful to have you on. Um, tell us best ways to get in contact with you. I mean, even though we expect you, you know, on the show uh, for for this segment, because, I mean, you provide so much information. But if it's Monday through Saturday and someone wants to get in contact with Dr. Michelle, what do we do? Well, you can reach the office at 516 516- Seven nine four two two zero zero. That's five one six seven nine four two two zero zero. And at ASK Dr. Michelle with one L. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and also we have a website. So it's www dot ask Michelle with one L dot com. And I look forward to seeing everybody there, the entire families. And if a child is a baby, and as long as they've had all their shots and the doctor gave them the okay to be outside, you can be pushing your child in a stroller. <laughs> so there are no excuses not to show up and have a good time. And we're going to have um, free giveaways, too. And, of course, I forgot to mention, we are going to be having a poster and a video contest for children and we're just working out the kinks for that where they're going to talk about why they want to be healthy and the importance of being healthy and we're going to give out prizes for the top winners in different age categories perfect dr michelle thanks so much for taking the time out this evening to join us and we will be speaking very soon Yes, and happy Sunday and happy Labor Day. Happy Labor Day to you, too, and the family. Tell Scott I said hello. Talk to you shortly. All right, and have a great show. All right, thanks again. All right, bye-bye. And that was our Ask Dr. Michelle segment. We're going to have a quick promo, and then we'll be on with Mr. Brian Snow. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook of your choice and a free 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash late night parents and choose from over 180,000 audio programs. Download a title free and start listening. It's that easy. Go to audibletrial.com slash late night parents. That's audibletrial.com slash late night parents and get started today. Why Audible? Audible content includes more than 180,000 audio programs from the leading audiobook publishers, broadcasters, entertainers, magazine and newspaper publishers, and business information providers. That's audibletrials.com slash late night parents.
Are you looking for some sick sports apparel? DHTK designed some of the newest and coolest brands such as Represent, Game Over, and Don't Hate the King. DHTK's vision is to integrate culture, fashion, and attitude that best represents the players and caters to us, the fans. Click on DHTK.com and subscribe to their mailing list for an automatic 10% off your order. If you are a basketball fan, follow DHTK on social media. Visit DHTK.com for more details. DHTK.com. You don't have to be a king to dress like one. I am loving my Verizon FIOS. In fact, I recently joked that if we move, we have to find a place with FIOS coverage. To my surprise, our family actually agreed. Not only is FIOS the fastest internet service, it also has never been down, with the exception of when Storm Sandy hit us. And indeed, only FIOS gives you the same speed uploading for your files, photos, etc., as it does downloading, as in HD movies. Cable cannot offer you this, only FIOS. So go ahead, make a very smart choice with Verizon FIOS. If you like your radio a bit on the fantastic side, try listening to the Happy Hour Network on Blog Talk Radio. The Happy Hour Network features live shows such as Late Night Parents with Ted Hicks, Baseball, Beer, and Barbecue with Ted, Todd Vandenberg, and Lee Vowell, The Seahawks Show with Kevin Daggett, and NBA Full Court Press with Danny Thompson. You can also catch podcasts like The Fwat Show, The Earnestly Speaking Podcast, Cinema Savants, and The Tennis Scene, found at blogtalkradio.com slash happy hour network. The Happy Hour Network, radio worth listening to. And this is Ted Hicks, Late Night Parents. This is 12.40 a.m. WGBB. Ways to get in contact with us on Twitter. You can find me as The Real Ted Hicks. Or you can ping us by going to Late Night Parent. We're also on Facebook.com forward slash Late Night Parents. And our website is LateNightParents.com. For those of you that are slightly lazy, lnp.tv will get you there. We want to thank um, Dr. Michelle for joining us for our Ask Dr. Michelle segment. Our next guest, CEO extraordinaire of Arena Sports Network that plays Late Night Parents, Mr. Brian Snow is on brian how you doing good evening sir it's a pleasure to talk to you same here same here my friend how are things there's 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 so much brian that you and i have talked about in the last month so Mm -hmm. i thought it was apropos to have you on the first night that we moved to sunday nights at 7 p.m to just generally have a conversation and maybe it's a it's it's a rooming conversation Mm -hmm. um we were, as I mentioned um, at the, st- the start of the show, that of all the radio partners, there's one partner, Arena Sports Network, that plays us five nights a week, mm-hmm. 12 a.m. It's Arena Sports Network. want to thank you for that, and thank you for the support. Um, I'd say it's you and the big homie, um, the under the underground nine O that shows, I mean, the amount of support for the show, which is unbelievable. Um, but let's get into it. You're in um, a certain region, mm-hmm. you know, in the Indiana area, Chicago mm-hmm. area, where there's a lot of talk going on because there's a lot, of, you know, there's a lot of senseless violence going on. And yes, this is a family show, so I think you and I on our podcast can really cut up, but what I just want to put this out there to you. Um, the senseless killings in Chicago. Um, also, there's a gentleman that didn't kneel, I mean, or he, he, he knelt down, he didn't stand up for the flag. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the word oppression is being thrown out there. Um, there's, there's a lot to go on that, that that's going on here. 
I wanted to open up the lines up to you to give you this forum to give me your thoughts of what's happening in the Midwest. You mentioned two very important words, senseless violence. Let's take the second word out of the equation, senseless. There's no heart, there's no sense of worth, there's no sense of salvation anymore, especially in the Chicagoland area, which is why I got the hell out when I did. When you go back to your own neighborhood, and you've heard me talk about this on my morning show, when you go back to your own neighborhood and you see the deterioration happening before you, time to leave. Yes. You know, people can talk all they want, and this is predominant in the black neighborhoods that have been deteriorated, that have been ostracized, that have been, for lack of a better term, demolished at the hands of the people that are in it. And people want to say all the time that, you know, you came from this neighborhood, you need to give back to it. How do you give back to a neighborhood that is never appreciative of A, what you were bringing to them, and B, what you had planned to bring to them. You can't get back to a na- you can't get back to neighborhoods like that because they'll never appreciate it in full. Period. That is true. That is true. Uh like 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 I said, I, I know our time is short here because we go extensively on your morning show. You have a great morning show. Um, you, ha- you have a great network out there, and and I, I'm not just saying that because you play the show or anything else like that. Because you know it could be easily <laughs> misconstrued by the people. Yeah, but you know, I mean, and it's a term that's been overused. You keep it real, Brian. You really do. You tell it like it is, and whether people want to hear it or not, you're going to give it to them. In some of these mm-hmm. situations I've noticed on your show, it's like you don't care. <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. I don't care. When I first started Snowman in the Morning in 2013, there was a certain pattern that I held to. My show was only an hour long at the time. After mid-2015, that pattern began to change after I extended it. I'm going to extend it yet again beginning Tuesday morning. That pattern started to change because I realized that I was missing a lot of points with the fans. They wanted to hear things that were not regurgitated by the major networks. Uh Things that that were not always talked about by the major networks. They wanted to hear an opinion and fans back up that opinion that is totally contrary to what you usually hear every morning. Being in the third largest market, Chicago, Illinois, I cannot tell you, 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 you know this, being in New York, if you're in a large market, New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, you're going to hear the same doggone things every day just served up in a different fashion Correct. because they are too afraid to dig deep and let their minds do the talking about what's going on before they spit out what's on a microphone. On the major networks, and you and I have spoken about this, and we're going to speak about this again. On the major networks, they're given an agenda, and they are being told to push that agenda down the fans' throat because you want to make sure that you, you, you keep the fans. Me, I don't care about an agenda. The only agenda I put together is what I put together daily for the show, and it outlines some of the things that go beyond what the major networks say. Period. That is the direction I took the show in beginning late 2014, it, it, it's held true through the most part of 2015, and it's definitely held true after a, a, a bit of a hiatus. I relaunched again in June of this year. And I can tell you, man, the fans are loving it. That's perfect. That's perfect. Give me a take really quick 
And, and I hate to even ask you this question because it's it's you know it's so layered. Colin Kaepernick. I, but my my question I'm going to ask you. We understood what happened. We understood mm -hmm. the protest. We understand mm -hmm. that a protest is supposed to disrupt or cause a disruption. Yep. Did we take a step back when someone, whom, whomever from the AP, decides to take a snapshot of the socks he wore on August 10th that had pictures of, you know, cops as pigs? No, we didn't take a step back, but AP sure as hell did. They went digging. Who's the hot story right now? Colin Kaepernick. They're trying to find every way possible to discredit him because he took a silent protest with something that he believed in. We as men, black, white, or whatever, and I've spoken this before, and you've heard me say it, we as men, especially in the 2010s, are slowly being eliminated, being emasculated. We're slowly being ostracized, and we're slowly being eliminated. Why? Because we have the power, and I'm not tooting the horn over here. I'm just speaking what is dead on truth. We have the power to change our society and bring people back together, period. The problem is, the bulk of society won't let us. Why, you ask? Because they know if they let the men that are critical thinkers, in honor of my comedic hero, George Carlin, if they let the men who are critical thinkers and realize what is going on with this, with this society and actually put a plan together to reverse the condition, how fast do you think they'll find something or try to find something against us and round us up like cattle and i'm not speaking specifically of black men i'm not speaking specifically of white men i'm speaking specifically of men period if the men that are and i will say it again if the men that are critical thinkers in this society are allowed to come together and reverse the problems that are in this society there will be so many people that will try to come against that coalition. And you want to talk about a societal war? That would be the biggest spark plug of it because people get tired of having things shoved down their throat and shoved in their face. Colin Kaepernick took a silent protest. Right. Okay? Because of what he believed in. He's allowed to feel the way that he feels. I know so many veterans that are standing with him, that are standing beside him. And let me go one step further, that are standing for him. Because he knows what's going on, and it's bigger than black and white. If people would wake up and think about it, it's bigger than, it, it, it's bigger than black and white. Brian, people will realize how much bigger it is. Brian, like I said, this is so in depth. This is more for a long form discussion. <laughs> I just wanted to introduce mm -hmm. our listeners to the illustrious Mr. Brian Snow because I I kind of expect with it with it now not being the you know the warm and fuzzy Saturday afternoon and we can now talk about real topics on Sunday mm -hmm. evening. It changes the tone. Yeah, it does. It really does. So I want to thank you for just a quick, you know, just just a quick uh, appearance. And, and I, I wanted to say to you, best ways of getting in contact with you on social media. They can follow me at Golden Voice Snow. Uh, that's my personal Twitter, and at Arena Sports Net. That's my uh, that's my business Twitter. Uh, we're on Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Google Plus. All the ID you need is Arena Sports Net. You can catch up programming via TuneIn by searching Arena Sports Net. Mr. Brian Stone, I want to thank you, and we shall be talking 
more on Sundays, but I think more on your show, and you're definitely going to have to visit the podcast on Wednesday nights. I want to thank you once again for joining us. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. And that was Mr. Brian Snow. I think in the queue, we have none other than the quarterback guru, Mr. NFL himself, Bucko Bruce. I'm so happy to have him on here and introduce Bucko to Long Island, to 1240 AM WGBB. Bucko, how are you doing, brother? Hey, my brother. It's good to hear from you, man. How are you, sir? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing good here. I'm doing great. How's the family? How, how's the wonderful children doing? Uh, I need to slow down on the growing a little bit, man. It's, <laughs> it's becoming a little bit harder to feed everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Bucko, uh, I, let's put it this way. I mean, I just had Mr. Brian Snow on from Arena Sports Network, and we were touching, you know, kind of like a prize fighter, that, 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 that heavyweight match that happens, and it's the first round, and we're dancing around, so... We're going to have, our, uh, like I said, a, a, a discussion that continues on and on and on. But I, I just want to let um, our listeners know, Bucko, this is not the first time you and I are talking. I didn't find you on Twitter. We have a long history. We've worked together down the dial um, on another station on Barbershop Sports. And it's always so good to stay in contact with you you know the amount of love that we have for each other. Absolutely. Yes, sir. It's always a pleasure, man. The first thing... Always a pleasure. The fir- I, I initially wanted you to talk a little fantasy, a little studs and duds, but I'm just going to put that to the side and say, what were your thoughts? And, and, and Bucko, I just want to mention, Bucko is tentatively scheduled for our Wednesday podcast where we're going to talk Bucko Bruce Knows Football. We're going to talk about the upcoming NFL season. Um, Bucko, you told me about this young quarterback a few years ago. You talked about him every day, day and night, whenever we had the show, online, offline. What were your thoughts when Mr. Teddy Bridgewater went down? Oh, man, that that was was a heartbreaking news because you look at a guy who – wasn't wowing anybody, you know. He only had 14 touchdowns last year, but just they they the barely scratched the surface on the talent level that I think the kid had. And you know, they won a division last year and come with you know a chip shot missed field goal away from beating Seattle in the playoffs. So right. I think that he he was on a path of where I thought he'd be years ago, and to have that gruesome injury just drop him back in practice. That's you know your heart goes out to Teddy man and. Pray for a speedy recovery. Definitely. Uh, that's really, really all you can say there. Definitely. I have one other injury that I want to get your thoughts on, and then real quick we'll go into your thoughts on, on fantasy. The upcoming fantasy football season is here. Um, what were your thoughts when Romo went down? Um, that was it wasn't a matter of if but when. Um, we all know Tony Romo's going to get hurt at some point. I didn't think it would happen in his first, you know, action playing football. That that was shocking, but I expected it to happen. Um, it, it is as per usual with Tony Romo and the degenerative back and you know shoulder and neck problems that he's had. So uh, a lot of Cowboys fans I talked to are excited. They actually think it's a good thing that it happened. I wouldn't be so quick to rush on that, but you know, it's kind of crazy. So I'm in two fantasy football leagues this year. I will tell you I'm okay. You know, I, I went auto draft for one and I actually picked in the other. I got some of somewhat of the similar players. Give me your fantasy studs and duds real quick, Bucko. Um you want to just the, the top guys? I mean just, I, just, I don't want to be vanilla. And then tell you about Odell Beckham, Antonio Brown. Everybody knows about <laughs> these guys. Um, everybody's pretty high on them as they should be. Um, I, I really like in the running back game. I really like Thomas Rawls in Seattle. Okay. Uh, I really, really like David Johnson in Arizona. They're getting, you know, the hype that they they should get. But um, you know, there's a lot of guys that are getting drafted early, like Jeremy Langford and Matt Jones and guys like that that I think are 
really not that good of running back. Uh, in fantasy this year, I'm telling you, there's maybe maybe twelve guys that are that are worthy of picking early. You know, after that, you just hope that you know you get one of the guys for depth later. As I mentioned, you're gonna we're gonna do a podcast this Wednesday. Um, okay. Bucko, who is going to in, in in just in your mind? Who's going to shock us? Shock us this year? Which team are you expecting? You know, everyone's not expecting to overachieve, and you expect that this could possibly be their year to not per se win a Super Bowl, but go pretty deep into the playoffs. Well, I, I don't want to sound like a homer. Uh, we all know where my allegiance lies. Yes, sir. Um, but uh, I, I truly, honestly believe, with the Teddy Bridgewater injury, that that opens the door for young Jameis Winston and the Buccaneers to sneak in via wild card uh, with a nine or ten win season. Uh, that would be my sleeper team of the year. I, I'm not hearing a lot of a lot of pundits uh, give them the give them the due because they've they've seen this story before. Uh, but I really honestly think things are working in the right direction for the Bucks. I'm not as high as most are on the Raiders. I still think they're a few pieces away. Um, but if I had to pick one team for sure, I think Tampa Bay is going to shock some people. And um, really, I think that the rest of it is all pretty much the same as it was. Nobody went up or down on the AFC side. So I think you'll pretty much see the same members, all depending on how the Broncos quarterback situation works out, of course. I want to go back to Teddy Bridgewater. That was probably the first question I asked you. You putting on your GM hat. You know, and, 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 and when we used to be on the radio on Wednesday nights together, I, you know, either you or I or, or, or one of us would be quick to say this one fleeced this one. Mm-hmm. Were, did the Vikings get fleeced? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that, that, that was, that was uh, no lube. They didn't even buy him a drink afterwards. Nothing. <laughs> that was just straight take it from you. Uh, that was unfair. And I, I really think that we should call the authorities on uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, that, that, that was not fair. <laughs> let's, not, let's not act like you know giving up a first round and a fourth round pick for, for anybody is not a wild wow move. But for Sam Bradford, that might be one of the most desperate, dumbest trades I've ever seen. Yeah, uh, it's, it's pretty bad. I, I feel for them. I, mean, I know they're in a situation where they have a complete team and they need a competent quarterback. I understand that, but Jesus, I think you could have found somebody better. I think Geno Smith would have been a better option <laughs> with Sam Bradford. <laughs> so, so I, I it, my 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 parting shot on this is: so I was headed to um, the Madison Square Garden yesterday. I was taking my son to go see the Liberty New York Liberty right. play. So, yes, I go and at least once a year, I'll go and support the WNBA. Right. Um, I just felt, and I sent in a text message. I said, all the Vikings have to do is just wait for Sanchez. And I know Sanchez is Sanchez, but at least with Sanchez, you wouldn't have to give up anything. And you can have someone that's going to, you know, give the ball to Adrian Peterson 30 times a game and somewhat give you, you know, maybe 170 to 200 yards a game passing. I don't know. I mean, was that, is that just too much? Of me being a, a Sanchez apologist, yeah, you, you still have that that feeling <laughs> sorry for Mark Sanchez gene in you. I mean, you along with a lot of people up your neck of the woods have just felt like this kid never got a fair shake. No, that, that's not accurate. The guy's just not good. He's not a good quarterback. He's he's prone to turnovers. He's you know erratic under pressure. He, he's exactly what you do not want in Minnesota. You need someone that's smart. You need someone that's efficient that's not going to turn the football over and put you in bad position. Sam Bradford, when healthy, has shown he can do that. He's shown he can be competent. Um, you know, but I still think it's a bad move. Gotcha. Bucko, I want to thank you, as always, for joining us. Um, we're going to try and have you here a couple of times during this football season um, yeah. to, to help us out. Because, you know, I mean, this is not a sports show, but – we kind of turned into a sports show when when the likes of Buckle Bruce steps in virtually into the studio and talks hey, about man. that pigskin. Yeah, the late night parenting should involve 
bonding with your son over the, over some pigskin. Yes, so, sir. Yes, so sir. We, we should mix it in there every fall. Hey, <laughs> hey, Bucko, what's the best ways to get in contact with you on social media? Uh, Twitter and Facebook's the same. Bucko Bruce eighty three. Um, I'm very accessible. I'm not, I'm not a celebrity. I don't have a blue check mark. I'm not big time like Ted Hicks, but <laughs> I, I'm always willing for a conversation and debate. All right, Bucko. Thanks again, brother. Thank you, brother. We'll talk. All right. And we're about to come to a close. We want to thank Dr. Michelle, Brian Snow, and Bucko Bruce for joining us on their commentary. Um, this is what we plan to bring you every week, every Sunday. You can listen to us here on WGBB 1240 AM Sunday nights. Wednesday night, you can listen to us on Blog Talk Radio forward slash Happy Hour Network. We're on every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Um, once again, thanking our friends, The Under, The Underground, uh, 90. Want to thank our friends, uh, XRP Radio, UNIR1, Life Improvement Radio, Arena Sports Network, Mile High Radio, I 95 Sports Radio. You guys help extend the, the brand and get the message out. You can also catch us on iHeartRadio. And with that, I think we're going to come to a close.